Welcome back, everyone. A couple videos back, we made a mosaic Damascus billet. And now it's time to go ahead and make the knife. We're gonna be making a hunter. As you can see, I've already kind of rough forged the profile. I didn't get in it too much because I don't want to distort the pattern, but I did kind of forge the tip in and draw out the tang, and I forged in the ricasso a little bit. But I've got it outlined, as you can see or not, where I can cut this blade out and go ahead and start finishing out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get it profiled and we'll take the next step from there. All right, so you can see I already cleaned it up and did a light etch so I could see where the center of my pattern is. And so that's why I kind of forged this billet down into somewhat a shape of the blade so I could manipulate the point to end up in the center. And so that's where I've got it scribed and that's where I'm gonna to grind to. Then I'll take it over and do a good surface grind, get it to the flatness and thickness that we want and move on from there. All right, I got the blade finished, surface ground up to about 220 grit, and now I want to do some thermal cycling and grain refining. And so I will get it in the oven and get that work done. Um, but while I was at it, I went ahead, I had a couple feather blades that I worked on. Uh, I went ahead and forged out and got them cleaned up. It was a billet I made a couple weeks ago, a couple videos back. And so I've got two feather blades, a clip point and a drop point. So I'm gonna get all that done at the same time, that way I can save a little time and a little energy. So we'll get these in the oven and I will go ahead and heat treat them because I'm gonna do all of the grinding and finish work after they're hard. I like to do that, everything stays straight. I'll still go back to surface grinder and hit it after it comes out of temper. So let's get that done. All right, we got them heat treated, I got them tempered, and then I just took some sandpaper, knocked scale off on one side. Most of it pops off anyway when you quench it, but you can see the pattern popping out on these. Of course, there's still a little bit of scale in here, a few places, It'll, that'll all go away. I'm Right now, what I'm gonna do is take them and put them back on the surface grinder and just clean them up, and then uh, flip, make sure these ricassos are good and flat, and then I'm gonna start profiling, shaping them, and start working on the guard shoulders. I'll do the ricasso area here and, and finish it out after I grind the blade. So we'll get these cleaned up, flattened, and go the next step.
All right, so I've got them all good and cleaned up. I've got my Ricasso area good and flat and square, which is what I want before I go to the next step. I like to have all of that done before I start fitting up my guard and cutting these guard shoulders because after I cut these guard shoulders, I don't want to do a whole lot of sanding here. I will do some finish sanding, but not heavy grits. I don't want to roll my shoulders here. I'll come back in here and clean up this underneath the Ricasso and in here after I grind the blade. But I've got all three of them there and I'm going to drop back and just work on the mosaic blade and work on these later. But you can see I've already got my handle material figured out and got to make guards. This one will most likely be a frame handle gentleman's buoy or vest buoy. And um, so it, it'll be a project on its own as well as this stag handled hunter, which will have a pommel, Damascus pommel, Damascus guard. This one I'm working on is going to have a uh, just a traditional uh, handle with a guard, a uh, 416 stainless guard. And uh, who knows, I may even, I've got some Damascus, I may put a Damascus guard on here. We'll see. Right now, I want to get these shoulders cut, marked and cut. I'll come in here. I hope I'm in focus here. Again, I'm using a uh, old camera because I've broken three cameras, I think, so far in my shop. Yeah. And I don't have autofocus. It's all manual. It's an old film camera, actually. And uh, you know, you don't use automatic settings in the film world and it's out of date and old and it's hard to do by yourself. But I come in here, get a square mark. I'm going to put a file guide on here to cut the guard shoulders. And I'm just going to do that over at my grinder. And to show you how to do that, many of you have seen that. I prefer to do them on my meal. I just clamp this just like this in my meal. And I, I meal my guard shoulders and a little recess here. I'm going to come back and file this recess. So I'll get this on, get it square, and we'll head over to the grinder. All right, I got some center marks here. They're about 40 thousandths apart there, 30 thousandths there about. But what I'll do is come in here and grind about a 40, 35 degree angle, something like that on there, down to those lines. I'll use a dull 50 grit belt to do that. Then I will put on a fresh belt. Also see that I like to do this on my hidden tang knives where I have something to hold on to. My fingers are kind of stubby and, and it's hard for me to hold this tang. I'll also start on a flat rest. I like to do that to establish those grinds and start my main bevels. Once I do that, then I can move on to the guards after finish sanding, all that fun stuff. So let's get these going.
All right, I thought I'd stop and cover something right quick. As hard as it is to do, I like to use fresh belts when I'm grinding bevels, especially I'm grinding after I heat treat, but it will prevent a lot of problems for you if you'll do that. And they're expensive, I know, but it really helps, especially when you get up in the higher grits to use fresh belts. Now I can get a couple, three blades out of a heavy grit belt, like a 36 or a 50, but these uh, higher grits, you're not gonna get so much out of them. And you'll prevent grinding issues, problems with your grinds. You'll also not overheat your blade, especially after you heat treat like I do. And you'll get good, clean cutting. And you won't have issues where it's uh, not cutting good and you push it more pressure and causing other problems like divots in your blade. So right now I'm up to 220 grit and I'm gonna go to a 400 grit belt and then a 600 and go to sanding. So I'm gonna get this done and then I'm gonna meet you over to bench right over there. All right, we got our blade ground and I went ahead and hand sanded it. And my edge turned out to be around 17 thousandths, which is where I like to be, somewhere around 20 or under. And I went ahead and ground and cleaned up the Ricasso area. Now it's time to start working on the guard. I also went ahead and ground the other two blades. They haven't been hand sanded, but that's the next project for them. And like I said, this blade is gonna be a frame handle. And if you'd like to see that build, let me know and I'll uh, put it up for a build video. But anyway, that's gonna be a, a neat little small vest buoy. Of course, this one is a feather drop point. But now I'm gonna start working on this guard. I got a lot of work left to do and uh, handle all that fun stuff. But we're gonna to have to do that on the next video because we're out of time. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my patrons, and we're going to see you on the next one.